I am a mom of three. My oldest daughter Gracie is from my first marriage. She is nearly an adult. I have Milo, a tween, and Lyric, a pre-tween with my current husband. My ex-husband and I separated days after Gracie's first birthday because he told me he wanted to see other women and wanted me to wait for him. I did not and I filed for divorce. He always remained part of Gracie's life, but he made it clear he only wanted me when it suited him. After the divorce, I met my current husband. Gracie was four before she was introduced to him. Her dad was angry when I found someone else. He hated my husband and Gracie always knew it. I went through the courts when my ex wouldn't stop bad-mouthing my husband to Gracie and didn't leave her out of our adult issues. The courts were not helpful at all and sent us to co-parenting classes. Gracie was hesitant with my husband. She adored her dad and didn't want him to feel hurt. This is something she told a therapist when she was young. Then, when she was eight, her dad died and it feels like there was no way my husband could be anything to her ever since then. We never expected him to be her dad, but to be someone she trusts and cares about. Gracie holds him at arm's length and doesn't treat him like a family member. She doesn't include him like she does the extended family. An example was last March. She was spotlighted in her art club. She sent a group chat message to me, both sets of grandparents, and her uncles and aunts, but did not include my husband. I mentioned it to my husband when I got home, and she'd made it home before me and still hadn't told him. So I brought it up to her and she said he wasn't on the need-to-know list for her. It hurts my husband and I've tried to facilitate their relationship to be more, but I don't think it was enough. A couple of days ago, Gracie was saying she needed help with some engineering questions and she wanted to go over to my brother-in-law's, sister's husband's brother's house to ask him some questions. I asked her why she had to go to all that trouble when my husband could have answered the questions for her. She said it made more sense to her to ask her uncle's brother. This was when I told her I didn't like how she does that, how she treats my husband like he's not there, like he's not part of the family. I told her we never ever asked her to replace her dad or to consider them the same, but she excludes him and keeps him out, and he's only ever been kind to her. I told her it was something I would like her to work on. She got mad and told me I chose to marry him, she didn't choose to have him in her life. She also said it wasn't my business what their relationship was like. I told her I'm her mom and I love her and I'm his wife and I love him and I just want them to get along. She's still angry at me and I'm trying to figure out if I did the wrong thing here. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot for what you said to her. Sadly, your ex may have completely poisoned Gracie's mind when she was very young to where she's turned into this hateful teen towards your husband. I don't know if there will ever be a recovery from this and shame on the courts as well. I'm sorry you have to be stuck in the middle of this. I'd say your now deceased ex is the true idiot. Everyone's the idiot here. Often, when a parent tries to steer their child towards something, the child will go in the other direction. As hard as it might be, I think the subject should be dropped and accept Gracie where she's at. Maybe in time, without the pressure, she will develop the love and respect for the role her stepfather has provided. We can't change how others behave, just how we react to their behavior. This is exactly what I was thinking, especially since dad is gone. I think that would make it seem more of a betrayal to her. Also, he died when she was at the age where dad was the hero. He didn't live long enough for her to start seeing the flaws. This might not be fixable. Your daughter is a victim of your ex's manipulation and may benefit from therapy to unpick this if she's not already receiving some. But she's almost an adult and old enough to know when she's being deliberately exclusionary and hurtful, and that's a bullying tactic. She's old enough to know and to do better. Does Gracie know the full story of why her dad left? It may be helpful to explain that to her. She doesn't know. I had her in therapy for years, regular and grief therapy, but I never brought up my relationship issues with her dad. It never felt right to do that, even if he was an idiot to me. Then it might be time to tell her she has this falsified image in her head that her dad was a perfect little angel that you dumped for another man. You will be the idiot to both her and yourself if you continue to withhold her truth. She needs to know that her dad lied to her while growing up. Disagree, the dad is dead. Trying to prove he wasn't a good person may result in her distancing herself from OP too, especially since it will look like a tactic to make her like her current husband. Clearly, the daughter wants to make it clear that the husband isn't family to her. Dad isn't here to defend himself, so this may seem like a malicious attack on his memory. Let her keep fond memories of her dad.
Last night, we planned on meeting for Mexican food to celebrate a friend's birthday. I was the first to arrive, 15 minutes early. I collected our reservation and was sat. I ordered my drink and just chips and salsa while I waited. Maybe 10 minutes later, the server, who was staggeringly good-looking as an aside, brought over a plate of nachos. I told him I didn't order them and he said, Your friend Andrea called and said she was running very late and wanted you to get started. I said, Cool. I started snacking. Pretty soon, this massive text wall started about how everyone was running late, at least an hour. I told everyone I was okay and was happy to wait since I was enjoying chatting with the server and getting up the nerve to ask him if he had a girlfriend. I continued to snack on the nachos. After an hour, people started to show up and the nachos were gone. Andrea got there last and asked what had happened to the nachos. I very casually said, I ate them. She looked at me in shock and said, those were for the table, they were $35. I said I was sorry, but they were getting cold and I was the only one there, and I said thank you and I would pay for them. She said she'd already put them on her credit card when she called. I said I would gladly buy her drinks. Then, in this very cranky, well, I can't drink, I'm pregnant, and this isn't how I wanted to announce it, so the pregnancy announcement changed the subject. When it came time to order, I said I was stuffed and didn't want an entree. Andrea got really upset again and said she wasn't going to sit here and take this and got up and walked out. I was in shock because I felt like even though I shouldn't have eaten the nachos, I did try to make up for it. Andrea went on a tirade in the text while the rest of us were trying to eat. The consensus at the table was that she wasn't feeling good and that I should just ignore her, so I did. I've tossed and turned over this all night because I made my friend mad. Was I the idiot? Not the idiot. An hour is a long time to wait when you're hungry and who would have wanted to eat cold nachos anyway? You were on time and everyone else was late including the woman who organized the whole thing. Most other people would have left after the first 30 minutes and you didn't waste $35 worth of food. I hope you got the waiter's number. No, don't hit on service people. They're just trying to do their jobs. And honestly, it's disgusting that people are cheering this on just because the server is male when hitting on female servers is considered harassment. Anyway, Andrea's pregnancy is no excuse for her behavior. Imagine making someone wait an hour in a restaurant alone and then getting mad at them. For context, it was not my intention, but it was how it played out. My brother-in-law, husband's brother, was away for college for four years and ended up eloping with a woman he'd known for seven months. None of us knew her, not that it mattered, but we met her for the first time a few months ago. She seemed pleasant, a bit shy, which is to be expected, and a bit rough around the edges. No big deal at all, but just like fidgety, darting ahead and looking behind her shoulder like someone was standing there when no one was. We found out a few weeks later that she has bipolar, unmedicated, so her behavior has absolutely made sense. I'm an RN and a social worker and I also have bipolar, but I'm medicated. On Saturday, mother-in-law invited the whole family down for dinner, and brother-in-law and his new wife, Hannah, showed up, and we got to chat at the dinner table about her diagnosis. She brought it up, not me, but she knew I knew about it, so it started a small talk, I believe. Well, it didn't take long for her to dive deep into this conversation, using her arms and hands to talk, getting a bit loud. No problems, the family is loud, so she fits right in. But then she became angry over nothing, started saying stuff like, It absolutely repulses me that people without bipolar try claiming they're manic when mania is strictly a bipolar thing. I wasn't rude by any means, but I corrected her quietly and said, Actually, mania comes in all forms and is not limited to bipolar disorders. She immediately said I was wrong, that her doctor told her that it was a strictly bipolar thing, etc. So I just stood firm and said, he's wrong, and even pulled up my medical ebook to show her the paragraph that speaks on mania and everything that can cause an episode. She refused to read it, so I just turned to my husband, who wasn't paying attention to us, and said, honey, you're a doctor, what causes manic episodes? He started listing off multiple things. Well, Hannah was angry. She immediately said we were just trying to one-up her and that she knew what she was talking about. My husband immediately said, Obviously not if you're going to sit here, argue, and gatekeep symptoms of illnesses against two medical professionals. He then turned and walked off, leaving us at the table with both brothers-in-law, sister-in-law, and mother-in-law looking on. Hannah then started crying, saying I embarrassed her on purpose for no good reason other than my pride and stormed out of the room after screaming for everyone to stop staring at her. Brother-in-law is telling me I should have just shut my mouth and storms after her. I'm really confused if I'm the idiot here.
Not the idiot. Hannah's diagnosis does not give her a license to rearrange reality as she sees fit, and she brought up the topic in the first place. I hate it when I'm having what I think is a strictly academic discussion with someone and they start taking it personally. She embarrassed herself. Your husband is absolutely right. She's gatekeeping her illness. I don't know where you should proceed from here, but going forward, I would go low contact. If her whole family is with her on this, it'll constantly be brought up that this argument happened. I'd save myself a headache. Disagree. OP's the idiot. You're a medical professional. You know she isn't medicated. While we are responsible for our behavior, even when managing mental illness, you could see her becoming agitated and you helped escalate. Not yelling doesn't mean you didn't help escalate. You had the option of shutting down the conversation. Instead, you chose to fight because you were right and even brought in a third party. But what was the point? With all your knowledge and experience, did you truly believe she would say, Oh, my mistake? Agree with this. If you correct someone who is clearly agitated using, Well, actually, you know that's just going to stir the pot. It would have been polite and emotionally intelligent to change the topic. It's not like she offended you or stated something about you. OP corrected her, but she disagreed. End of story. My teen female parents are going out of the country for a week to attend their best friend's wedding. Because of this, my brother, one year older, and I will stay home alone. My mom usually cooks all our meals, so since she'll be away, she's asked me to take over. For some background, my mom forced me to learn to cook when I was 11. When I asked why my brother didn't have to learn too, she said she offered to teach him, but he refused. I also refused, but she made me anyways, and though I was angry at the time, I'm grateful I have this skill. When she asked me, I told her my brother and I should split the cooking in half the week. My brother protested, saying he didn't know how to make anything, and my mother agreed with him. I told him it was his fault for not learning how, and that I would only do all the cooking if I could get paid for it. My mom said she wouldn't be doing that since we're family, and family does stuff for each other. And I said, if that's the case, then I'll only be making meals for myself. My dad then got involved and told me I was causing unnecessary issues. Look, I get it if my brother was five, but he's literally older than me. Shouldn't he be taking care of me? My family doesn't seem to agree with me, so I'm wondering, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. What's your brother going to do when he moves out? Just make enough food for yourself. I'm dying laughing at the thought of someone who is a mid-teen and can't sort a meal for themselves. The dude should be in hospital care if they are actually that incapable of taking care of themselves. Good for you for standing your ground in this unfair situation. I feel there are two ways you could resolve this. Just cook for yourself, your brother will figure out how to feed himself eventually. Or, say, you will handle all the cooking if he handles all the cleaning while your parents are gone. It's the better deal, in my opinion. Or, malicious compliance, only cook stuff he dislikes. You are, after all, doing what you were told. I'm sorry, OP, your mom probably wouldn't admit it, but it seems glaringly obvious that she insisted you learn to cook because you're female and didn't force your brother because he's male. Also, I guess this is all legally okay, but personally, I wouldn't leave two mid-teens at home alone for an entire week to parent each other. Sounds like a terrible idea overall. I, 28 male, have a sister, 30, in the National Guard, and two months ago she came up to ask me if I could watch her dog over a deployment that would last about a year. She originally wasn't going on it, but some of her unit got in a car accident that resulted in two dying, and the other being medically discharged, so now she has to go. Now, for the asking, I could have theoretically taken her dog and helped her out. I have a dog, and I know it would have taken some work to get them into a pack kind of situation, but quite frankly, I didn't want to. I have the time, but I just didn't want to, and that should be a valid reason all on its own. So my sister rehomed her dog and told my family about it. Nobody's really mad at me, but they say overall it's just not a great situation. So it's been about a month and my sister is now deployed and was talking about it in our family chat, but she's still upset over it. I tried to tell her that it was okay and that her pup was in a better place and will be taken care of by her new people. She got quiet and the family chat moved on. My dad made a yikes face and after we concluded, he told me that what I said wasn't okay. It wasn't fair for me to do that because it's not my fault for not wanting another dog temporarily, but family helps family, and realistically, I had no place to say what I did. He said I'm not allowed to speak about pet ownership in the chat and call me an idiot. So, am I the idiot for telling my sister her dog is in a better place? 
Of course, you are the idiot. JFC, I'm autistic. I literally have a diagnosis of struggles to understand social norms, and even I would never contemplate saying something so casually cruel or thoughtlessly hurtful. Your sister didn't rehome her dog because she was a bad pet parent or because her home wasn't a safe, loving, or supportive place for her pet. She rehomed a deeply loved pet because she literally had no reasonable alternatives, and it was the only loving thing to do for this creature that she cared so deeply about. To find it a good new home herself rather than surrender it to a shelter where she couldn't be sure of its long-term prospects. And worst of all, she had to do it while grieving the deaths of two fellow guardsmen and possibly the serious illness and injury of another. I cannot imagine the stress she's under. And you looked at her under these circumstances and you thought that the kind and supportive thing to do or say was to suggest, not that she'd done the best she could in impossible circumstances, but that her beloved canine family member was actually better off without her, in someone else's home. Just wow. Of course you're the idiot. You owe her a huge apology. I had all the capacity to help my sister care for her beloved pet while she was deployed but couldn't be bothered to, then took a massive heartless verbal dump on her because she misses him. Are you always this tactless? Jeez. The dog is not in a better place. You just told your sister that she was a bad pet owner and it's good that she lost her pet. And yes, your sister will be upset at you about this for pretty much the rest of your lives. So figure out why and what went wrong. Do not pull a surprised Pikachu face when you need an emergency babysitter, your car broke down, you got in an accident, etc. And you need to borrow one ASAP and can't wait on insurance. You're visiting and would like to stay at her place or you get in an accident and need physical support. Because frankly, she'll tell you that she has the time and could but doesn't want to.